This John BB and College Football Tournament edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. The UFC is back, international soccer is back, golf is back, and the NBA return is coming. Use the promo code SGP for up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Finally, we're brought to you by Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams is a new company with a full line of premium smokable CBD, now shipping legally to all 50 states. And if you use the promo code SGP, you get 15% off. That's K U S H Y dreams.com, promo code SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Good day, Sean. Good day, indeed. We're here on a very special a uh, Don BB podcast. We also have a big announcement regarding how we're sim gods. We're gonna <laughs> we're, we're gonna continue that. Possibly uh, give away a little a cold hard cash. Joining us as always, third man in the booth. Kobe Dan, aka the Danta base. Oh, am I the sim god? Is that what you're trying to say? No, you know? you're you're not the sim god. <laughs> you're dressed like a fucking dog today, uh, Colby. Dude, I, I, I am I am like a hipster did you take in that, Silver Lake. Did you take that from your dog? Uh well at one point, yes. It's okay. been washed. <laughs> a, a few originally it was bought for my dog, but since I can't get gas in fucking LA without wearing a uh, some type of mask, and I don't have one of those uh, surgeon masks. For so, the older so, folks out there, well, that he, used to be used as a reusable snot rag. I feel like I'm a douche, like one of those douchebags, like Johnny Depp, like walking around, <laughs> like you know what I mean. And I, I like Johnny Depp; he's a nice guy. But I'm saying, like, oh. the hipster want to be Johnny Depp's. You I know love how mean? Colby's worried Johnny Depp's going to hear this podcast. I bartended huge, on him before; huge, and he was cool huge, as shit. So. Huge Don Beebe fan, Johnny Depp. Well, Kobe, if you need a uh, if you need a mask, you can just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com <laughs> slash merch and uh, pick up an SGP mask. Maybe I'll get my dog one of those. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> and one of you guys will uh, stop COVID from spreading. But <laughs> hey, it appears COVID's over and uh, sports are coming back, so we're jacked for that. Got an awesome interview with Don Beebe coming up in just a second, and uh, yeah, let's just get on to that. But before we do, oh yeah, and big Kurt, announcement. Yeah, we're gonna say that after oh, the okay. Don PB interview. <laughs> if you were listening, the three times I said it before the show started, uh, as far as the structure of the show. Sorry, someone's got to make sure shit's working. Also, check out uh, Kramer and I did a uh, NFL prop bets for the 2020 NFL season, going through all basically a bunch of player props. Uh, we did ten each, so uh, check out that podcast. And we have a, another po- podcast coming up with another Super Bowl champion. It's Super Bowl week here on the Sports Gambling Podcast. Of course, if you want to bet on those NFL prop bets, if you want to bet on our Sims simulated games, the games may be simulated, but the money is real over at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code SGP for up to $1,000 in bonus bets. That's right, $1,000. Golf's heating up, NASCAR's back. Premier League, I guess that's the thing. Some sort of soccer yeah. uh, antics. <laughs> UFC, We've got some UFC action. Check out sportsgamblingpodcast.com for some sweet, sweet UFC picks. All that can be found over at mybookie.ag, the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast and the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Making your content dreams come true and helping us keep this completely free. So, if you like SGPN, you like the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, please support mybookie.ag. And when you do, use that promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. Joining us on the line, Super Bowl champ receiver Don Beebe. Don, how is uh how you doing right now? I'm doing great. Um little little bummed right now. I got a little uh toe issue. Going, but um, but besides that, I'm I'm not doing too bad. Now I, I, you're talking toe issues. I, I noticed in your Twitter bio you have your forty time four point <laughs> two one. That's amazing. What do you think if you're completely healthy? What do you think you could run right now? <laughs> uh, five two one, maybe. I have no idea. Um, 
the last time I ran, I'm 55 right now. So the last time I ran full speed was four, I was 41 years old, um, against some kid at a speed camp that we were doing. And I ran a four, I ran a four, three, eight at 41. Oh, wow. That's the last, that's the last I ran. And that four, two, one was for the jets in 1980, 1988. Wow. That, I mean, that's, that's insane. Especially with all the things, uh, you know, all the changes in like, you know, just uh muscle, you, you know what they say, Sean, you can't teach speed. And I think when you see, when you see 40 times today, <laughs> it's become it's become very, the most important. I, I know it was, it's always been important, but it's become so important now. And, and Don, I'm sure it did help you, but you see receivers come in the league now with that underwhelming 40 time who can still flat out catch passes. Do you think we've sw- the pendulum has swung way too far in the, in the favor of the 40 time? Well, First of all, let me let me just restate your statement uh, and correct you a little bit. If that's okay, <laughs> he teaches uh, a speed camp. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you actually can teach speed. What they should say is you can't teach world class speed. So gotcha. meaning, you know, we can't make every kid a four two four three or four four forty. I mean, genetically, you got to have that gift. But to take a kid from a four eight to a four six, or even a four six to a four 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 five, we have done that thousands of times. Um, so, and if, and with my situation that if I wouldn't have trained, I don't think I would have ever been able to, to reach that level either. But, you know, do, do I think the 40 is overrated? Absolutely. Uh, I think the 40 is overrated and here's why your best route runners in the national football league are your four, six guys. And why do I say that? Uh, if, if I wouldn't have never had Charlie Joyner as my coach, when I was in Buffalo and everybody knows Charlie, um, he taught me how to adjust my speed to make a cut because I was creating so much speed into a, say a comeback or an out route or something like that. I struggled being able to get out of that cut. That's why a four, six is so much a better route runner, a Jerry Rice and Andre Reed guys like that. Just great route runners because uh, Steve Largent, um, because they have that perfect j- speed to create that, that explosiveness to get out of their cut. Yeah, I know that was always my problem. I was too fast. <laughs> Sean, I think I, 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 I think dial I, it back. I think I just learned that my high school track coach. It wasn't because it wasn't it was it wasn't because I couldn't be taught speed. I was just slow. <laughs> yeah, you I didn't. couldn't get in the forties for the four hundred, and he told me he couldn't teach me speed. He was just blowing smoke up my ass. He, I appreciate he needs, that. He doc. needs to tag it with the world class speed. Well, you certainly had a had an yeah. amazing career where you showed off some of that speed. As an Eagles fan, I, I want to say thank you for <laughs> for stripping Leon Lett in the Super Bowl because my my childhood was ruined by those Cowboys uh, victories, <laughs> and that was like a bright spot of the Cowboys demise. Demise Leon Lett just you know kind of gloating into the end zone and you being the scrappy fast guy, uh, and it's just a, a perfect example of you know, playing the play to the end of well, the whistle. Well, and Sean, I have a question based on that play because you that was a pretty ridiculous rundown. When you started chasing him down, did you think you were going to catch him in time? Uh, no, actually, um, you know, the, I, first of all, when you watch the film, nobody really knows how far I was away uh, because I wasn't even on the film when you watch the game film of it. <laughs> uh, so we're estimating it was in that 30 to 40 yard range. Uh, with that being said, I was just, I was just doing a go route down the left side of the field. And I turned and started to look back and see if Frank Reich was throwing it to me. Then I saw the ball drop out of his hands. I stopped and I saw Leon pick it up because he picked it up pretty quickly. And I just started running. And, and as I was running down the field, I literally, my thoughts were, how am I going to tackle this dude, man? He's so <laughs> huge, you know? He's jake He's and plus 300. I, I, I I literally was going to jump on his back. I'm not kidding. I was going to jump on his back. But then when I saw the ball out to the side, I mean, he, he made my job easy, but I, I always tell, you know, cause I do a lot of public speaking and you know, if I'm talking to a bunch of kids at a camp or something, you know, how you react to something really shows your true character. And coach Levy used to say this in every game, your character will be revealed good or bad. And, and how you react to something truly is your character. Because if you have time to think about it, most of us as a, as Americans are, we're going to make the right call. We're going to do the right thing. Most of us, but when you react to something that really is your true character. 
And, um, and that play just became the staple of the Buffalo bills and, and who I was and who we were. Um, so I personally, I wasn't happy. I mean, we're getting our tail whooped. Why would I be happy about running down Leon Lett? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, you look at the score, but I, I, I do think it, it was a great example of the character. And I know Ralph Wilson, he even, uh, he came up to you after the game and, and kind of uh, talked to you about the play. Yeah, that's a good point because that's really was the first time I actually started to think something different about, I didn't even think about the play. I mean, I get in the locker room, it's 52, 17. We're, we got our tails whooped for three suit bowls in a row. Now I would, nobody was happy, but he, he literally, uh, Mr. Wilson came right over to me and he said, he said, listen, son, you showed me, he didn't call me Don or 82 or, Hey son, you showed me what Buffalo is all about. Thank you so much. And he said, thanks. And I was like, wow. Okay. Well, that was kind of weird, you know? <laughs> and then I had to, then I had to go down to the media room. I got called down to the media room. And I was like, I don't want to go down there. We just got killed. Well, I, well, but I went and I couldn't believe how many people were around my table and podium. And, and all the questions were centered around why, what made you do that? And, and I started thinking to myself, wow, that must've been a pretty special play. And then I get back to Buffalo one bills drive. And, and for weeks, I was getting boxes, not just a couple of letters here and there. I mean, boxes by the hundreds every day. I had to go and get a box. And, and I received thousands of letters. And here still today, guys, and what are we, 26, 27 years later, I get mail every day still at the school that I coach or at my house or, at, or my business that I run that people are still talking about this play. And they're <laughs> saying thank you. And coaches and and and, uh, you know, teachers and the ones that really mean the most are the parents and man, it's gotten so many miles guys. I've never seen anything like it. Well, that's awesome. And, and I think it kind of, it speaks to your character, but the character Buffalo Buffalo is just a great, uh, you know, kind of truly mm-hmm. blue collar town. And it, it's always cool yeah. to see in sports where a guy kind of matches with the town and, and really gels. And uh, I mean, if you, even if you go to B- get bills games today, there's tons of uh, BB jerseys in the, in the crowd there. And I, I think you really resonated with the city of Buffalo. You kind of had a, a, a non-traditional way into the NFL. Can you kind of walk people through your college to uh, getting drafted? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll kind of give you the reader's digest. Um, but before I kind of give you the reader's digest story that, that, that story is actually turned into a book. And then now it's, I'm in the works of finalizing a deal with people out of producers out of Nashville to turn it into a, a TV series or movie, which is crazy. Do awesome. you think? Uh, yeah. So it's, it's because it's, you know, I came from nowhere, uh, you know, and I, I literally only played two years of college football, one at Western Illinois, and then one at a really small NAI division two school in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska called Shadron state and look it up on the map. It literally is nowhere. <laughs> and so I only played two years of football. And then I landed up being the bills first pick in the 89 draft, which is absolutely crazy to even comprehend that, you know, that just doesn't happen ever. Yeah. How do you okay? go from Shadron state to, to the bills pick? What did you, well, yeah, what happened was, was this is I, you know, I, how I got, there's a guy by the name of bill Giles and he was, he was a combine scout which means he, he didn't scout for one team specifically. It's his job to go around the country and his region was the Midwest to get the top 300 players in college football to the big show at Indy for the big combine. Right. Well, how's a guy, how's a guy like me from shattering going to get there? I mean, give me a break. Right. So somehow he comes up, he puts me through a workout to his dying day. He told me it was the greatest workout he'd ever put somebody, somebody through. And he never did tell me what it, I ran the 40 in. So that one, I don't know. And so how I got invited was that guy, Bill Giles. He gave me the highest recommendation he ever given an athlete. That's crazy. You think about that. Well, yeah. I get there and I go in there and I'm telling you, I didn't have an agent. I didn't know I needed an agent. I didn't know what an agent <laughs> really was. You know, I literally had, you know, the clothes on my back that I went into and and I'm seeing Deion Sanders and Barry Sanders and Troy Aikman and all these guys from the 89 draft, Tony Mandrich. Yeah. That's a crazy and draft class. Me. Yeah. And there's me, you know? And, and the thing is I get, I get to my room and my roommate was Mike Barber. Mike Barber played with Marshall. 
University. And no sooner I get in there, the door knocks, and it was a concierge of the Crown Plaza. And he had these two orange Nike shoe boxes. And he goes, these are from Mike Barber. Great. Okay. I, I give him to Mike and I go, what are those? He goes, oh, these are the shoes I'm running the 40 in tomorrow. And these, and they were, one was like lime green and the other one was like bright orange, you know, track shoes. And he, and Mike goes, what are you running them in? And I looked at my feet and I said, the shoes I wore in the building. <laughs> he goes, you got to be kidding. <laughs> and this is the God's honest truth, guys. I, they were my old ASIC fishing shoes from high school and on my right sole it was half unglued so when i ran it really flopped oh and that's God. what i ran the, that's what i ran the 40 in yeah that's the honest truth and i ran a 425 in that year uh and the reason i know that is because bill polian who is the general manager of the buffalo bills who drafted me he told me that three years after i had retired i didn't know what i did that day I just knew what my life changed in, in a matter of 4.25 seconds. It literally did. I went from complete unknown to a first pick off a 40 yard dash. I ain't kidding you. Wow. That, I mean, that's an insane story and, and kind of almost yeah. feels like fate that, that, that they found you, that you got to the combine and then you run that amazing time and your career started off kind of with a bang there. You had a, uh, I think it was a 63 yard touchdown catch your first game. I did. And that's kind of a funny story in itself too. So <laughs> the first two games I didn't play as a rookie, cause you know, we weren't doing the cake on offense then in Buffalo. It was literally the old days, you know, first, second down, third down, the third receiver comes in and the fullback goes out. Right. Well, I didn't play the first two games cause I was fourth on the depth chart. Kelly goes to Marv Levy on a Tuesday or day off and says, I you know, we drafted to BB, we'll put him on the field. So they cut Chris Burkett. I moved in a third receiver slot in that Saturday, the third game of the season in 1989, I get the first chance to be on the field. So I'm in the huddle. And the first time I go up to the line of scrimmage, who am I going against? Chris Dishman. Yeah. And Chris is talking trash. Chris is talking trash to me in a fun way. I mean, he's a great guy. <laughs> and Chris, like, he goes, Hey, mate, come on, BB. He goes, come on, dude. I want to see this. I want to see the speed, man. I hear you're fast white boy. And I was like, Oh God, I was scared to death. I ain't kidding you. <laughs> so, so thank God it was a run play. So the next third down I'm running out there again and I'm supposed to do this post corner route. And as we're breaking the huddle, Jim looks at me and he goes, beeps. If he's pressing on you, I'm throwing to you, man. Just go deep. I was like, Oh God, here we go. So sure enough, I get up there. Dishman's pressed again. And I beat Chris for a 63 yard touchdown. The first pass to ever go my way. Crazy way to break in. Right. Well, the funny part of the whole story is this, is that the next series when we had the ball, it was another run play. I'm running up the line of scrimmage. Dishman gets right in my grill, and he backs up like eight steps. And he goes, dang, white boy can run, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to paint the picture to our audience, if they don't remember the younger audience, if they don't remember Chris Dishman, he was one of the elite corners in the NFL at oh, the time. Chris was great. He had a phenomenal career. Yeah, no, and, and, and a great guy. I mean, he was, he was fun to play against, but boy, man, he had me scared that day. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you, in, in your bills career, you had a number of, uh, you know, we're involved in a number of crazy games. One that no one will forget is of course the uh, you guys are down 32 points against the Oilers in a playoff game in the third quarter. And you somehow yeah. managed to come back. I know you had uh, that game. You had four 64 yards and a touchdown. I mean, you're down mm -hmm. 35, three. Did people actually think you guys had a shot? Uh, there was one guy that one guy was Frank, Wright. Hell yeah. Uh, and, and Frank was my roommate. So I knew the inside story. Well, of, he did it in college too, right? He did. He yeah. has the greatest comeback in college and, and professionally. And, uh, I, I remember waking up early that morning. It was a blustery cold morning in November, most likely De no, actually December. And, uh, it was a wild card game and I couldn't find Frank. And usually, you know, I get up and, you know, Frank, whatever he's around and I can't find him. So I go downstairs to the, can't find him in pregame meal. Can't find him in meeting room, watching film. And next thing I know, I look out in the parking lot and he's in his S 10 blazer and it's all fogged up. I'm like, what in the world? So I go out there freezing to death, knock on his window. I said, dude, what are you doing? He goes, beats, beats. Don't worry about it, man. He says, I got to write these words down to this song by Michael English in Christ alone. I'm like, Frank, we got a game today, pal. What are we doing? You know? So he goes, just trust me. Okay. Uh, okay, Frank. So I left. 
we get into the game and we're getting killed 28 to three at halftime. My, my locker mate was uh, right next to me. It was Steve Tasker. And we're sitting there talking at halftime and Tasker goes, bees, where are we going golfing next week? <laughs> you know, it's like, He's okay, this thing going, right? Yeah. yeah. So well, anyway, uh, Daryl Talley, pretty much our leader, vocal leader was a, had a rallying cry. And Marv said, Hey, you know, they scored all these, we can do it the second half. Okay, great. So we go out there first series, Frank throws a pick. Okay, bounces off Keith McKellar and, and Bubba McDowell takes it the other way like sixty yards. Okay, thirty-five to three. Can we now go home? Really, was <laughs> you know the thing. But Frank was the one that just kept pacing up and down the sideline and just going, "Hey, let's keep doing what we're doing. We're okay. Keep making plays." And we're all sitting there on the bench. They can do. Shut up. Sit down. It's over, <laughs> right? So next thing you know, we rally, score. Kenny scores. We get the onside kick. Frank throws me a, like a thirty-some yard touchdown. And it's 35 17, and it's still middle of the third quarter. Then we go on a roll with three straight to Andre. And it was like, what is going on? I've never seen a stadium so packed, 80,000, empty, okay, like half full, and then be packed again by the middle <laughs> of the end of the fourth quarter. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, but what a game to be a part of, man. One of the greats of all time, no doubt. That, that was one of those games where I feel like you remember exactly where you were watching that oh, yeah. one. But uh, but you mentioned before the K gun offense, and and what's crazy is you guys were kind of trendsetters with that because now I feel like you were running no huddle, uh, you know, shotgun, throwing to the backfield, throw, throwing to Thurman Thomas a lot out of the backfield, and uh, yeah. now nowadays I feel like it's all over football. So you guys were definitely trendsetters in, in that in that light, right? It really was, and it and it, it, you know it was ahead of the time, and I remember it all started in the Cleveland playoff game in '89, my rookie year. And in that game, we got behind Cleveland and, and Jim pretty much in that third, fourth quarter, really just took the game over and no huddle. And after the game, we, you know, we landed up not pulling that game out, but we made a rallying cry. And that off season, the guys were talking, you know, Ted Marchabroda and the quarterbacks and, and obviously Marv and said, let's just let Jim be Jim. Let this pull the reins off and let him go, you know? And that's when Jim was at his best. So when we broke out in 90, 91 and 92. I mean, we were just on fire. And the biggest advantage to it, guys, was this: is that we ran that defensive front into the ground. I mean, there was, there was games we'd watch film on on a Monday after the game, and the defensive line would just be standing there. I mean, they were so dead tired; <laughs> they weren't used to it. They just weren't used to it. So we were definitely ahead of the time. And uh, and now that I'm a coach, I use a lot of those that you know terminology in and the ability to run plays every 10 to 15 seconds and how to make it faster. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of, almost every team is doing that now. Now you're, you're coaching uh, the D three school, Aurora university. You guys went what nine and two last year. Uh, when mm-hmm. did you, uh, when did you make the decision to go into coaching? Well, I, I knew after I retired and I started, started the business house of speed and I was training athletes and that was great, but I wanted to be a part of it that the more intimate level on a daily basis with the athlete. Cause I, I knew that that was a gift. Uh, I loved being around athletics and I loved coaching kids and helping them, you know? So then I decided to get into high school coaching, which I did in 2004, uh, at Aurora Christian high school. And I did that for 14 years and then became an empty nester. My kids were dead, done with high school and gone. And then I thought, you know what, let's, let's see if I can move on and go to the next level. And, and the local job here opened up, they asked me, I said, heck yeah, let's do it. And, uh, here we are so just finishing our first year at Aurora university. It was just a great year. Um, and really looking forward to this coming fall. Now you, you, you talk about, uh, your playing days with whoever, uh, do you ever hit him up for coach? Do you guys talk coaching at all? Now, now that he's in the NFL, he's, he's had a bunch of success. Yeah. No, Frank, you talking about Frank? Yeah. Frank. Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that. Uh, uh, yeah. So, and then my roommate in green Bay now is Doug Peterson. You oh, know? Wow. So, uh, yeah. So obviously, and then I sat next to Andy Reed in all the meetings at green Bay. So those three guys are obviously very good friends and <clears throat> you know, before they got to the, cause Doug used to be a high school coach down in, I think, uh, Louisiana, I think it was, but it was somewhere in the South. And we used to talk all the time about having our high schools play each other. Um, but Frank and I, you know, talk a little bit more when he was coaching early in his career, um, and talk strategies and best plays and stuff like that. 
since they become head coaches, it's harder to get, you know, have these conversations constantly um, because it's just, you know, their time is just very important. But um, in saying that, uh, we have had our moments of, of talking strategy. Yes. Talk a little shop there. I know. Uh, I mean, besides that, that crazy comeback for the bills, you're also involved in, I remember watching this play a million times, watching the NFL films. They dubbed it the pogo stick play <laughs> where basically you get flipped over land on your head. Walk us through that because, uh, and we'll put a clip up on the, on the website or, or share your video there. Cause it's, it's really a, a crazy play. And, and you, I mean, you seem super fortunate that it wasn't a more serious injury. Yeah, that actually was the Cleveland playoff game my rookie year that I was talking about earlier when the K gun started. Uh, and it was third, it was late in the second quarter, and we were driving before half. And I think it was like third or fourth and 17, I think a fourth and 10, somewhere around there. And I was coming across on a deep dig route, and Jim threw a little bit high, and I went up and got it. And Felix Wright took my feet out, and I landed literally right on the top of my head. And I bounced, you know, like a foot off the ground, off my head. Jeez. <laughs> so, yeah. And I've had many people tell me throughout the years that, you know, just one way left or right or forward or back. I mean, with that force of coming down, I mean, it could have been, it could have been real ugly, but the good Lord was with me and, and I was able to come out of it. It, it did tear my neck muscle, which I still believe it or not. I still today have scar tissue and ill effects from it. And I got to go, you know, to a chiropractor and get it rubbed out and such, but you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm not complaining, but that was <laughs> no. a, that was a heck of a play. Yeah. That was a wild play. And the crazy part is you still played in the second half, even after that, that, that crazy tweak to your neck and, and, and pulling that muscle tissue. That's called adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> is it? it yeah. It, I mean, are you really that amped up? I mean, we see these stories of guys, how they're getting, you know, jacked up before the games, but Kind of walk us through, uh, you know, walking out to a sixty thousand person stadium. How, how jacked up do you get? Those are, there's two things. Almost every player, when you talk to them, what they miss the most. What do they miss the most? They miss running out of that tunnel. That's number two. Okay, number one, they miss the camaraderie of the guys, and uh, just love being around the guys. And you know, those are memories that you can never repeat and you never forget. Uh, but boy, the adrenaline rush of running out of a stadium, like, you know, rich stadium or, or Lambeau field, um, guys, that's, those are feelings that are just unexplainable unless you do it, you know, and feel that rush yourself. But it's, it's incredible, man. And I miss it. Well, you talk about the, the kind of rush and, and playing in big games, you appeared in six super bowls, which is really crazy because uh, I think it's just you, Mike Laddish and Tom Brady that have been in six <laughs> super bowls. Of course, Brady got a couple more now, but yep. uh, and and you not only were you in six Super Bowls, but six out of the nine years. So there are only three years in your career where you didn't make <laughs> it to the Super Bowl. That's got to be. I don't have the stats in front of me, but you've only <laughs> you have to be the only guy in NFL history who's made it to the Super Bowl sixty six percent of the time in your career. That's pretty pathetic, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I mean my, fam- what, my what family. What happened in those other we three years? <laughs> Well, first of all, yeah, I know. I what happened? This and this is the this is the truth. Uh, after the like the third Super Bowl, okay, uh, when the season started, my family was looking. Okay, where's the Super Bowl? And start getting hotels. I mean, they were already <laughs> booking it, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it was it was just I was very fortunate. I was very fortunate to hit the right teams at the right time. Uh, be at Buffalo in the four in a row, and then obviously going to Green Bay and hitting two more. Uh, just great organizations. They understood what it took to get to that game uh, because it's more than just talent. I'll be honest with you. I don't think talent necessarily always wins. There's a lot more things that go into winning a Super Bowl than talent. Yeah. Uh, and, and we did that. And, and Super Bowl 31, Brett Favre said afterwards that he, they would have never won Super Bowl 31 without you. And he gave you the game ball from what I understand. Yeah. Now, now we talked about your Buffalo memories. What stands out about green Bay to you? Well, in reference to what you were just saying about Favre, he, he, was, he said that comment because of the San Francisco 49 game that year when we won on a Monday night game uh, in overtime. And it was one of those historic games for me personally, um, you know, having a game that I did. 
which was such a pivotal game because if we'd have lost that game, we probably would have had to gone to the 49ers during the playoffs and play, but they came back to us, which is a huge advantage being in Lambeau. But, um, you know, I, I remember when I was at Buffalo and I played with a guy named James Lofton, which everybody knows. And James always used to tell me, he says, Babes, listen, if you, if it ever works out here in Buffalo and you land up going free agent to somewhere else, man, you got to go to green Bay. He says, uh, there's just something iconic about Lambeau field. You know, he's right. I mean, the first time I walked out on the hollow grounds of Lambeau field with, you know, the, the, the old Vince Lombardi and all the stories. I mean, it's the history of football, man. You know, uh, was was very cool, and the and the fan base was very similar to Buffalo. Uh, it, you know, it's it's all they got, man. They just they loved their Bills and they loved their pack, and uh, you know, un, unlike some big cities, in some other cities that you see, uh, those two teams are unique in itself when it comes to fan base. Yeah, I, I think you're throwing a dig at the Chargers, and that's okay. They deserve it. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, it's fun. I didn't see that at all. No, it's, I mean, that's, what's cool about green Bay and Buffalo. They are just those small town, you know, working class cities that just love their football. And by the way, that game he's talking about against the 49ers, he had over 200 yards receiving, correct Don? Yep. It was 220. I think it was uh, that, that Monday night. Yeah. Now, but you grew up in Illinois, right? So were you a bear fan Mm -hmm. growing up? Uh, Unfortunately? Yes. (laughs) So here, I mean, listen, you talk about screwed up BBs. Listen to this. I grew up a bear fan. Then I become a Packer f- fan. And then now I'm a Viking fan because my son plays with the Vikings. So you talk about screwed up. Yeah. You're all over the place. <laughs> well, and your, your son, Chad BB entering his third year with the Vikings. I know the Vikings just yeah. traded uh Stefan Diggs, So maybe some more opportunity uh, for Chad to get out on the field. And how, how excited are you for uh Chad's uh, season this year? You know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a completely different feeling. You know, when you're in it in the moment and it's you, uh, you know, you don't get nervous, you train hard. You just, you know, you're just kind of in just do being you right. But when it's your kid, it's a whole lot more nerve wracking and crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and he's, and he has a great story in itself and I'm not going to go into his whole story, but his story is, a, is extremely unique in its, in its own way. Um, he just needs to stay healthy. He knows that, uh, if he stays healthy, uh, the kid can play, uh, you know, if you were to ask me who is a better receiver, I mean, my son, Chad's a better receiver, uh, his ability to run routes and catch balls in that slot position, uh, is he does that very well. Uh, he just has an injury prone career. Uh, he just needs to stay healthy. And so I, he's found a new, uh, uh, way of training, uh, let's say from a medical standpoint. And, uh, and I think it's really working. So I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty confident. Let's say he's gonna, he's got over this injury bug and he's going to do very well. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, maybe a late round uh, fantasy, uh, <laughs> keeping an eye out on Chad. I like Pick the inside up, scoop Pick there. Well, and Sean, I gotta, I gotta ask because Don played during a time when the NFL was filled with men. <laughs> and there were a lot of scary men out there. So, you know, I was a Giants fan. Uh, apologies. We did take you out for one of those Super Bowls. Lawrence Taylor was on that team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. what <laughs> that was there a scarier man to be to to, to attempt to crack come back on that crack back than a guy like Lawrence Taylor? Yeah, Lawrence was Lawrence there's certain guys on teams. Ronnie Lott. Yeah. Uh Steve Atwater, Dennis Smith. There's certain guys that when you're going to play and you're a guy that has to come across the middle, you know where those guys are. <laughs> and Lawrence, and Lawrence Taylor was certainly one of those guys. So, yeah, he, he you know, you could argue the greatest linebacker of all time. He's in that category, no question about it. And uh I I think you were kind of uh talking about this when when we were talking about developing uh in, into a TV show, but your book uh 6 Rings from Nowhere, do you want to do you want to talk about that a little bit and and where people can get that? Yeah. You know, I was never a, I never thought I was a book guy or certainly not a movie guy. I mean, <laughs> I thought that was for guys like Jim and Kelly and Brett Farr, but you know, I, I have such a unique story and coming from nowhere. I mean, I go to a mall or restaurant people, I, I fit right in and, and I'm just the common guy that's, that made it. And, and so I can, and then the Leon Lett play, you top that on top of that, uh, you know, 
people can relate to Leon Let Play because it's about never giving up and it's about life situations and making the right decision and all those things. And, and so people can relate to me. Um, and, and when people approach me about doing a book, I, my first thought was like, ah, I don't have a book. Come on, man. And the more they talk to me about it and, you know, and I'm a man of faith too. And, and it gave me a great way to share my faith through this book and, and, and such. So I said, yes. And we, they wanted to name it six rings from nowhere. And obviously, you know, the six rings are six championship rings, you know, four with the AFC and two with the NFC. It's not that I won six Super Bowls like Tom Brady, you know, that's why they named it that. Um, and, and I said, yeah. Uh, and it turned out great. I mean, it's does, it's done a great job. Um, you know, you know, somebody wants to get the book. I mean, DonBB.com is the best way to, to get it. And I thank you for allowing me to promote it, which I'm not a big promoter, but, um, well, hey, it, yeah, it, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to yeah. check it out. Well, and, Sean, real quick. I didn't tell either of you guys this, but Don, I also coach, I coach youth sports. <laughs> I have two daughters coach soccer and I've actually shown your play to my older uh, team to show them what, what heart looks like. So appreciate you creating that relic of history. And I'm definitely going to pick up your book. Well, I, I appreciate that guys. And I, and that's the why, and that's the reason I did it. You know, it just tells a story of never giving up. It tells a story that geez, I mean, if I can do it, you know, pretty much anybody can do it. You know, if they just, and it doesn't mean it had to be football. It could be anything you want to be in life. And, um, I, I think two things, and I, t- I say this all the time to, to athletes, especially the two biggest reasons why people don't make it. Okay. Is one, they don't think they can really down deep. Do you really think you can? And as a kid, if your dream is to play in the NFL, do you really, really think you can, you got to believe you can. And the second reason is they're just too lazy. You know, if you want to be great, man, you got to put a lot of hard work into it. And people don't realize, I think sometimes how hard it how hard of a worker you got to be to achieve great things. So I think between those two things, I've seen, I've trained a lot of athletes now and coach a lot of athletes. The ones that figure out those two things, well, they land up being good at something. Well, that's a, that's a great message, Don. You kind of reminded me of Rudy. If he could run a four, two forty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I know Rudy. I know him very well. Oh, actually. you do. Yeah. Seems like I a do. good guy. Yeah. Oh, he's a great guy. He's a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you check out donbb.com and give Don a follow on Twitter at donbbnfl. Don, appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on. No, you bet, guys. All right, you bet, guys. We'll see. Don BB. No one circles the wagons like Don BB. Hey, if you're if you're thinking about uh, circling your financial wagons and starting your own business, I suggest you check out aceperhead.com. That's right. Ever thought about starting your own sports book? Don't know how to do it. Ace per head makes it so easy. All you got to do is go to aceperhead.com slash SGP sign up there. They give you up to uh, six weeks free. If you use our link, they, they completely set you up. You got an all inclusive professional betting site. The lines are updated uh, wagers. They're graded immediately. They make it super easy to set up your own sports book operation. Great customer support going 24 seven. Check them out. Aceperhead.com slash S G P and make sure to check out cushy dreams. That's right. The new smokable CBD company. They got tons of uh, CBD, rich hemp flower, AKA bud put in your tobacco water pipe, pre-roll CBD joints. I like the CBD pre-roll, the creative Kramer. I know you're a big uh, CBD guy. Peace and love. Peace and love. Yes. Kramer's a big fan of the uh, CBD piece. Yeah, if you don't, if you want that CBD feeling, nice little uh, relief, a little relaxing. It looks like weed, smells like weed, but it's not weed, so you don't get that weed high. If you're someone who gets paranoid from marijuana, CBD could be your thing. And uh, the 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 pre rolls are fantastic. Just go to cushydreams.com, use a promo code SGP, get up to fifteen percent off. Cushydreams.com promo code SGP. Let's do it. Let's make the big announcement. The Sports Gambling Podcast Network in association with SGPN. We're now proud to announce a 16 team college football tournament that we will be simulating in the month of June, two nights a week, Saturday and Sunday through the entire month of June, two games a night. 
We're going to have a bracket competition where we're giving away $500 cold, hard cash, winner, take all. We'll throw it. We'll throw a uh, merch for the top five, but $500 cold, hard cash for the winner of the best bracket. And we of course have 16 teams. Let's talk to the board and decide uh, how, how did we come up with the 16 team? I, tournament? I know it's challenging. I know that the, the, the real world can't figure this out. Well, this is great like. because there's not yeah. exams right now. And I know that's a big reason why people are holding off and creating uh, I, a, a more substantial college football playoff. So we had to step in, show the people how to, how to <laughs> create a 16 team tournament. The database walk us through the process of creating. Well, this. it's kind of crazy. You win your conference. Oh, and you get a birth. It's kind of isn't that wild? You would think. You would think it. I mean, Division Two does it. FCS does it. Division Three does it. Not that complicated. But just you know. And what the, Colby's trying to say is, unlike the real college football landscape, where the regular season really doesn't matter, and it's just about how people feel about you. <laughs> we are objectively reviewing the season. We are saying the whole season matters. It matters so much that winning your conference gets you an automatic bid. Mm. That's 10 automatic bids from 10 conferences. We don't care if you're a power five. We don't care if you're a mid major, you win your conference. You're in the next criteria we looked at was just simply number of wins in the FBS looked at your rating made it pretty easy for us. Honestly, yeah. it wasn't hard after that. And guess what? News flash. You know, who's not in there. Apologies to Alabama. Oh roll, wow. Roll tide apologies. <laughs> but if you can't even win your division again, college football enthusiasts, tell us how much the regular season matters. How much it matters each every game, game in that's, the playoffs. That's it's why, such a BS. Argument. That's why yeah. the bulls yeah. matter. Listen, I hear you old guy who wants asterisks next to everything. And I'm going to allow your rule to take so much weight that Alabama is out because they didn't even play for their own conference championship period. And then they didn't have enough FBS wins wins period. So, so let's, let's walk people through the 16 teams that are in the tournament and the, uh, the first round matches going backward to forward. The winner of the Mac, Miami of Ohio. They're the they're the 16 seed essentially. They are the 16. Let's just go through the matchup. Yeah. They are the 16 seed taking on no surprise here the winner of the SEC LSU. We Tigers Joe Burrow going to face off against a Mac foe that beat that, his dad's defense. Well, and to clarify, these are we're simulating this on College Football 14 NCA 14. Last year they made the game with the 2019 roster. So basically, we're going back in time. To get the college football tournament. Yeah, imagine right. imagine if they made a real tournament this past season. That's the roster. So first game, these games are in order. So this is the first game Saturday, this Saturday, June sixth, eight PM on the East Coast, five PM on the West Coast. The nine seed, the winner of the American Athletic Conference, Memphis. They are gonna be headed to Utah. Again, first round games will be played on the home site of the higher rank school. They will be taking on the at large Utah Utes. This is a very intriguing That's gonna matchup be a great, here. Yeah, it's tough. You're going out to Salt Lake City with the altitude. And again, that will be the nightcap on Saturday. How'd the committee determine these at large bids? Well, that that's what we were getting to earlier. Essentially, if you did not win your conference, the committee looked at frankly, how many wins did you have against FBS programs? Did you play for your conference championship? Yes. Like SMU had more FBS wins than Alabama, but SMU didn't make the cut because they didn't win their own division. So didn't in, even play for the conference in Utah's championship. case. They had, I, I don't have it in front of me, Colby. I don't well, remember. They played for the PAC 12 championship they, lost to Oregon. They played for the yeah. PAC 12 championship, but they also qualified with number of FBS wins. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So Moving on, the five twelve matchup: Oklahoma, winner of the Big Twelve, taking on Boise State, the winner the of the rematch. Mountain West, a rematch of the Statue of Liberty play. Of course, Peterson Ooh. fame. He's now retired. That's how long ago that game was. 
Are you gonna? Are you? Gonna, I mean, I guess, I guess you guys are married, so it'd be me that have to propose to somebody mm, if, if yes. uh, Boise State wins. Yes, hey, that, Boise that would, State. I'll call a Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> She's her her uh, her green card is hanging in the balance of this simulated Boise State Oklahoma game. The next matchup, the number four seed, the at large Georgia Bulldogs are hosting the at large Cincinnati. Oh. Bearcats. Luke Fickle getting that defense ready. I'm already hearing the stampede of elephants as people are outraged. Bam is not in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if we made objective rules. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Georgia, Cincinnati, that will be the nightcap Sunday. And then moving on to next weekend, the 6 11 matchup, the Wisconsin Badgers. They're going to be hosting Notre Dame, a little Midwestern battle right there. Both at large bids. That should be love good that game. matchup. The winner of the ACC, the three seed Clemson, they will be hosting the now. Unfortunately, Appalachian State did not exist in the game <laughs> yeah. in 2013, 14, so they weren't in this game. So we went with uh, they were they're out. They've unfortunately yeah. the committee has uh, found them guilty. <laughs> they are going to be in that process. Uh. They're suspended for this postseason, unfortunately. So the Raging Cajuns of Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette, who, who they played in the Sun Belt Championship that won eleven games. Exactly. And then uh, the final day of the first round will be that Saturday, June fourteenth. Oregon, winner of the Pac-12, as the seven seed hosting Baylor and at large from the Pac-12 or the Big Twelve. That's a Good one. And Ohio State, the winner of the Big Ten, taking on the winner of conference USA, Florida Atlantic. They actually played this year in the regular season. How about that? You know? Now rematch. I will say, I will say, I, I I do think people who are arguing that Alabama should be in this tournament, I hear you. But I hear they you. lost twice within their own division. They didn't even I don't even think they finished second in their division. They didn't they tie no, with the University Auburn? of Lafayette, they definitely have a better case than Alabama. They won their conference. The tournament. They are the representative <laughs> yeah, well, of they, that they conference. They sort of won their conference. <laughs> <laughs> not really, but and again, that's just because no, Appalachian but they played State, for their conference championship. Yes, Alabama didn't do they that. They did not. Yeah, and yeah. they're not in. So we've we've fixed the college football playoff system by creating our own college football tournament. If you want all the information, how to enter your bracket. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash CFT. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash CFT. Enter your bracket. Kramer, I'm sure we'll have some uh, data up there for you as far as the team rankings. And of course, all the uh, spreads will be available over at mybookie.ag. We even have some early. Don't we have some early numbers here, Kramer, for the uh, first couple games? And just to be very explicit, because I know people will be like, what were the criteria? 10 FBS wins, 10 FBS wins was the first criteria. The next tiebreaker no, was the only, you know, I'm saying the yeah. next tiebreaker would have been, had you not played for your conference oh. championship. So Alabama didn't even qualify. Yeah. They weren't, they, they didn't, I mean, SMU had 10 and, and I'm sorry, Sean, what was yeah. your question? Uh, my question is we already have lines up for this weekend's games. Let's, we let's throw those out there. Let's throw those out there. The first game, the early game, LSU hosting Miami of Ohio. Uh, we I don't know when these lines will go up, but this is what the openers sh- should be. LSU minus twenty four. My- wow, yeah, n- forty nine is the total, and then we have Utah minus eight. Fifty four is the total against Memphis. We have Oklahoma laying fourteen and a half. Give me those Broncos. Against Kobe can't help Boise himself. State with a 61 <laughs> total, big time total there. And last up for this weekend, Cincinnati heads to Georgia, where they are 13 and a half point favorites. No, 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 dogs. George, sorry, Georgia yeah, is okay. the 13 and a half point favorite. 48 is the total. And of course, home field just goes to the uh, highest seed, right? And I think what we're gonna do is for the second round, maybe we go neutral site, starting in the second round. Colby, how say you? Are you are you signing off on the neutral site? Why don't we save the neutral site for the final four? No, we can well, do that. The older the older people in their seventies and eighties, they like no, to no, you know what? keep the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl. But I, I personally could care less, Sean. I you know, I don't I think it's an advantage for the teams that are close by, as you yeah. saw this last year in the national championship. LSU actually the last two championships, LSU has won. They've played them in the Sugar Bowl, which is a huge home field advantage. Final ruling yeah. because I already wrote it down. <laughs> neutral site starts in the final four. Okay, there we go. Lock it in. And there will be a third place game won't be in the bracket contest. Stay tuned.
And of course, uh, make sure you submit your bracket for a chance of five hundred dollars if you take home the uh, first place. Coach Leach would be proud of us. He would. He would. And maybe one day we'll get to sixty four. But let's just start with sixteen. <laughs> All you got to do to sign up and all the details, just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash CFT sports gambling podcast.com slash CFT for college football tournament. And of course, Thursday and Friday night, all this month, we will be streaming uh, Madden games, eight o'clock East for the early game, 10 o'clock East for the late game. And then Saturday and Sunday, we'll be switching over to college football hashtag jumbo June, where we have Eight o'clock uh, and ten o'clock games on the East Coast for college football Saturday, and then on Sunday as well. We're going to be running that all four weeks in June, and uh, tons of sim content and tons of podcasts. Uh, make sure you check it out. We just did the player props one, like I said. Got some big name guests tuning or coming up, so you want to stay subscribed. Spread the word. Let's get this thing going, baby. Throw us a uh, five star rating and review. And as always, thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Oh man, I can't wait for this tourney. Kramer, let it ride.